much. I appreciate it. Uh, good afternoon. This is our work session for our first meeting in, or I'm sorry, for our recess meeting in March. Um, it's March 15th, and uh, we will be having our, our work session for the meeting that will be on March the 19th meeting. So we have um, a couple of things that we're going to do as a part of um, the session so that we can get briefings from um, Mr. Clements and Captain Ballard on our status of our city surveillance cameras and slightly more in-depth locations for them. So he's going to put a map up and talk about that. And then we're going to get an update from uh, Gary Logan on the Park and Rec Department activities, and then we'll go into our agenda. So, Mr. Clements, are you ready to roll? I am, ma'am. All right. It's all yours. Mayor Board, I um, just wanted to, last time we talked about this, I had a static image. <clears throat> we wanted to bring up the Google Earth imagery and uh, show you uh, a few things. We wanted to show you first our existing cameras that we've had for some time just to give you an idea of what we've been looking at. Uh, then we're going to do an overlay of the ones we just talked about. Phase one is what we're calling it. Uh, and taking a more in-depth look at those locations. And then also I'm going to throw a layer on there that shows new proposed locations or desired locations for the future, what we're thinking about. And Captain Ballard here to talk about from the policing perspective the justification of why why they they want cameras in certain places and, and how that best serves their needs because that's what this is it's a it's a policing tool it's an investigative tool that uh, that the police can utilize to to keep us all more safe and and, and all that good stuff so just want to talk to you about that also the the camera order uh, that we talked about phase one has been placed uh, the manufacturer based down new Orleans is completing those units for us and should be shipping those out shortly so uh, stay tuned on that and i'll keep you updated as, they, as we start actually deploying those yeah Hopefully anticipated what, arrival date uh, I haven't heard a, a, an update, but of course the weather uh, hopefully cooperates as well <laughs> because we, we, even if we had them right now, we couldn't couldn't hang too many of them the last couple of weeks. But what didn't the, want to talk to you just. What uh, are the odds that, that they'll be installed and ready for the Cotton District Arts Festival? I'm hoping high. That that's I've, I've got that on my calendar pinned, you know. So I'm really trying to trying to make make that happen as well. So. We're sort of at the manufacturer's mercy a little bit, but they realize that that's an important date to us. So I've definitely communicated that with them. But first, I want to show you uh, this is uh, this first layer here is our existing cameras, and these have been, especially these down here on Main Street, have been in service for some years now. <clears throat> so you can see we have uh, a couple over here. Uh, let's see, City Hall's right there, just to orient you. Have a one here at the at the intersection of uh, Restaurant Tyler and, and the courthouse, and uh, we've used those to great effect uh, uh, over the years. Uh, moving on down, uh, Maine well, University. Can I ask, Joel, have they have they reached their useful life? How old are they? they they're they're old. They're they're beyond their useful life. Useful. <laughs> okay. They're still useful. Don't get me wrong, but okay. they're older than you would typically expect a, a piece of technology to be. So those are, and that's a good point too. Some of these ones in yellow that you see here. Are, are going to be replaced with future phases. So we're going to we're going to phase those out. And at several of these that you see, these two down here, one one at University in Maxwell, and then one down here at, at Loomis, they're backhauled via cellular, which is the problem I spoke to, to some of you about uh, previously. That that cellular data connection, just like the cellular data you use and experience slowness on game day weekends or big crowds. That's what these guys are re relying on to back call this, this HD video signal. So you can imagine how you know mm -hmm. choppy that, that video can be. So the big superlative or one of the big superlatives about this new project and this new system is our ability to back call it with a hardwired connection provided by Max Out. So there is no more traffic jam, so to speak, during a, during a game day weekend or a Bulldog Bash or an arts festival things like that so that's that's one thing I'm excited about as well so you're just, saying that independent of the load of people that are in that area that log jam it or that that's right this, this will you know no matter how many people are in that area this is on a separate totally separate system so it'll, it'll uh, you know totally ignore the, the number of people there as far as the, the data throughput so um, you know and just you know not to go too deep into detail but the, these cameras have served us well they have Given us vital information uh, on some incidents that have that have occurred that we've we've had to investigate. So it's been something that uh, you know we we've been really excited about and, and wanted to for some time to to press this forward and to expand this project. So 
just wanted to show you those that we have had these in, in place for some time. And now let me uh, let me. Is that click. six of them, Joel? Is that what one, two, three, four? There's uh, six of them. That's six right. of them. Okay, that's and right. they're still functioning right they're, now. They're right? all functioning. They so, are all okay, but those are, are those are the critical locations that if one of them went out, we'd want to replace that one kind of immediately. Right, that's almost a Captain Ballard question. Right, right. They've been pivotal up to this point in time for many different types of investigations. Okay, so that, those are optimum locations. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Do they still show very clear? They do. They do. And, and it's really, uh, you know, they're not HD, but the, the new cameras are HD, so that gives you the ability to read tags more clearly. You know, if you, if you just happen to get kind of a glancing shot at a tag, these new HD cameras will show you in more detail, things like that. So these are pretty good. I mean, you can tell what's going on. They're not like some of the grainy ones you see sometimes. You see that surveillance camera, and you're like, I can't even tell what that is. Uh, these are better than that already. Uh, <coughs> they are old units. What are age of those? These, these have been around since about the time I started, so they're about eight years old. They are past their life. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> it's been a long time. Okay. Well, uh, so now I'm going to click here, and I'm going to activate the phase one overlay. And this is what we talked about last time. And you can see here, um, indicated by the red pens, sort of the, the ring that we're starting to establish around the city. And uh, again, Captain Ballard can speak a little bit more to the, the police philosophy using their statistics and, and expertise. They've decided the most effective locations for these. So I know he's, he's talked about a ring around the city and, and sort of some, some inner concentric rings being built out as well. Um, so let's go, let's go through where they are. Sure. Please. All right, and here uh, is the intersection of Russell and Highway 12. And so you'll notice, and, and just myself as, as not being a police officer, but noticing the pattern here, there's a pattern of where, where we have big crowds, where a lot of people move on a game day weekend or a big, big event weekend. So uh, moving on down here, this is the Mill Conference Center you can see here. So this is further down on Russell Street. Um, this, of course, is the big entertainment district. We have tens of thousands of people literally congregating down there on a big event weekend. Uh, so it's, uh, you can see sort of an like inner ring starting to form around there. You have one over here on Colonel Muldrow and then one over here on Jarnigan. Um, and so along with these, you, kinda, you see you can't come or go into the cop district without you know, passing by one of these cameras, and that's the idea. Like if something were to happen, we could potentially you know, see somebody or a vehicle coming or going uh, as we access that footage. Okay, so one of the two, or, or two of these new ones here in the Cotton District, are those are the camp, the ones that the camps have, have generously? <clears throat> right, they, they sponsored to? those with their right. donations. Those, and an important thing to notice, those locations were selected by us right. previously. So that, right. that didn't influence the location, that's just sort of them being supportive of, of our efforts. Right. So, and do uh, we know, is there one in the parking garage? Do we know if, if Mr. Castleberry has one in the parking garage or associated with the mill itself? What we hope to, ma'am, is when we bridge in with uh, private partnerships later on in the later phases, okay. as we uh, chose these positions, we looked at and were hopeful for, uh, like the parking garage and other locations that they bridge in with our systems and okay. we take it at that point. I just didn't know if there was one there now that we wouldn't have had anything to do with necessarily. I, I do believe that they have their own internal systems, but not one that we've had to utilize. Okay. Yes, sir. And then moving on down here, um, as we go down to, this is the end of Russell Street and Lampkin. So this is Fire Station Park right here. Um, just, a, 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 again, an intersection that the PD was, was interested in. Are these cameras 360 degree? I mean... I like These that. units have four sensors on them, so four individual cameras per dome. They're not pan tilt zoom. We do have some PTZs out there, but these are not those. These have four sensors that you can set when you're mounting them, and so they, they point at those different directions. So there are different types of cameras we can, we can employ, and like I said, we do have some PTZs out there. The thing about a PTZ is, Without somebody manning it full time, you really don't get to utilize the full potential of it. And that's not what these are. These are not manned full time. There's not a big screen, you know, big wall of screens that, that we have somebody looking at all the time. This is more like if something were to happen in a location, we know that location, we know we have a camera, we can easily go back and pull that footage and find some very valuable information. I was going to ask you that question from a, this is, this is a policing question. 
but from a strategy standpoint, is it better, do you think, to have signs that, you know, sometimes you deter crime by saying, Survivor's this is under video premise, you know, monitoring, or is it best not to have signage up? And I mean, do you have thoughts on that? I, I do, sir. It depends on the crime. In these particular situations, we're looking at deterrence. So obviously, and it took a little bit of cell job with the red and blue blinking portion of the cameras. You want to notify part of the deterrent of the criminals that, hey, look, you're going to be on videotape. So that's part of it, and in these cases, you would want to clearly mark, and I think that's the purpose of the lighting with these camera systems to indicate, hey, you're part of the system, you know, uh, don't come here looking for crime because you're probably going to get here. I'm a fan of that. I just think if you prevent the crime, then if you haven't had the crime, you know. That's but, right. Uh, yes, sir. And the company we're working with offers many different types of enclosures. The ones with the red and blue flashing lights, which are mounted outside here at City Hall, that's what these new ones are, and they do provide that, hey, look at me, this is a, a, a police asset. So it also gives you peace of mind. I mean, if I'm out there, I can, oh, PD's keeping an eye on us too. So um, they also have more clandestine boxes that look like, you know, just a standard piece of electrical equipment that you would normally see on a pole. But that's not what this is. This is to let everybody know, hey, we're keeping an eye on things. Joel, I have one more question. So in, in the places where we don't have masked arms or, or whatever, are we looking, are we, these being mounted just on uh, our existing utility poles? They are on utility poles. And also an important thing to note too is these locations are our desired locations. So uh, the pinpoint's not really a pinpoint. It, it's yeah. with, where Generally. we have assets, where we can find mm -hmm. the pole with some connectivity on it. So it may not be at that exact intersection, but we're working with Max South to find where we can actually hook up. Joel, you mentioned we don't have a bunch of TVs going there. Somebody's sitting there watching all these cameras. We have the capability, though, if I want to see something in the Cotton District, we can go to that. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So in and special events, they might be monitored. Oh, right. And we do that with Bulldog Bash right now. So those ones you see on Main Street, when we had that big crowd down there, we did have those pulled up. Okay. So when, when there is something going on, just a typical weekday when nothing's going on, you wouldn't. Yeah. You know, now, they, the feed is displayed in, in police dispatch, but you know, the dispatchers are sort of doing their primary <laughs> duty, so they're not really keeping an eye on that at all times because they're very busy as it is. But certainly we can pull that feed up at any time. But um, that gives you an idea uh, as we pan out. Let me, let me talk about some of these uh, that are further out. Gary will like this one here. You can say that the Outlaw Center is right here. Uh, there's the, the entrance there. And again, this is uh, may not be at that exact entrance or that exact location, but we're trying to capture this this location. So what it'll range be somewhere. Did they have? Matt? What range did they have? Um, they, without zooming, I mean, you could get, again, you know, you could get a tag within a 100 feet or so. You know, you lose detail, of course, as you, as you right. get further away. Now those PTZs, you can zoom in and get you know crystal clear detail very closely. But if you're zoomed in over here and something happens over here, you've just missed it. So these are kind of casting a wider net. And eventually, we want to, um, and certainly as we talk about hopefully getting the, the new uh, recreational area and all that, we want to plan to continue to build this this type of thing out because we want to keep an eye on our city assets as well and make sure people are safe uh, and our facilities are. Safe so well. just an order of magnitude, if, if you had it where the pinpoint is at the sportsplex, could you catch something at McKee? Is no, it line of sight? That, that so would no. be too far. We, okay. we could hopefully catch somebody coming or going. Right, okay. You know, if we knew something happened at 1 o'clock and we saw... Well, that's what I know, meant, coming out of the drive. They would, would right. It, Only know. if they came this way, it would okay. it, be a long okay. shot to yeah. get that. But we do okay. want to get assets into yes. this exact area. Yeah. And all, all of our parks, actually. And, you know, we had that uh, that demonstration unit uh, at JL King, and of course the, the company that was a loaner unit they've since taken it, but we do plan to put one back up there. Same, same that's place. That's a major okay. city facility right sure. there, so so we definitely want to keep an eye on that one. Uh, and then just kind of the edges of town, the very busy intersection, people coming and going here on Old Eighty Two, um, and then. Let's see, there's one down here. Yeah, there it is. There it is. Um, and this this is Walmart here, just as a, as a reference. But uh, that's phase one, and, and you know, it's sort of a, a small phase, but uh, with this new partnership with Max South, we want to, you know, get these deployed, see how it goes. And of course, we're, we're budgeting for this too. We have right. to keep an eye on that as well. And, um, 
Joe, how long will we be back and we'll do a loop or something? Or how, how long will we store something? We're going to store this at least two weeks. So if something happens, we can go back two weeks. And that's all, we're storing it locally. So this is in our data center at City Hall. So we're somewhat constrained by how much space we have here. We have a lot of space, but HD video takes up a lot of space. So, um, you know, once something is, is considered a piece of evidence, there are different rules on how long we have to keep it. So, you know, a DUI, we have to keep for a certain number of, of weeks and, a, and more severe cases we have to keep for even longer than that. So if we identify a piece of, of important footage and pull it off, we keep that for a long time. But if you're aware of something happening in the, in the prior two weeks, we can go pull that just from the, the standard archive that we keep. Have we identified some businesses that could be beneficial to us? I mean, the, camp, the camps obviously are first in line there. Um, have we identified like Walmart or some of the other businesses that would be on those edges that might want to participate with us that we could reach out to? Absolutely, and, and one important thing to note is sort of the Project Greenlight. So we've talked about the Detroit's Project Greenlight uh, before in, in some of these conversations. And we're sort of using that as a template for where we want to get. So this is this, this project is laying the foundation for that. And what Project Greenlight essentially is is eventually once we have our system built out, and this is the city's municipal system, we have a little info packet that says, hey, if you want to participate, you buy this DVR and these cameras, and they're your DVR and your cameras. That, you know, you own them and you take care of them and all that good stuff. But if they're the, the right brand that talks to our system you can just federate that feed right back to us. So we don't have to drive down there with a, with a USB and hope, to, hope it's a, a good quality. And hope it, we give you the specs and you deploy it and we can, we can consume that, that video feed if you would like us to. And we've been working with Security Solutions on that, is that, that correct? That's right. Okay, so pulling them into whoever we use or whoever is interested in participating in this, right. they would... They're, they're going to be a partner in that, and, and once we get to that point where we would, you know, get those specs together and sort of, uh, you know, put that out on our website, they, they would be one of the, the partners that we would send folks to. Uh, and really, any anybody that wanted to participate, any company that wanted to sell that, that gear could certainly do it, and okay. they've been a great partner to I us. I know of one of them. I mean, there's a, there's a business on Academy Road, isn't there? That's That's right. <laughs> there's also one on Louisville right, Street, right. so we've got a number who probably would uh, be willing to entertain that. That's right. That's right. And we're excited about getting there, and, and th this is an important first step in that. And there's a few, few infrastructure things we have to get in place, but I'm hoping by next budget year we'll have the, the final infrastructure in place needed to fully take advantage of that project. So cool. that definitely that's where we want to be. Okay. We, want, we want participation with, with, with anybody that wants to participate with us. Certainly. Okay. And then uh, this final overlay here is the proposed uh, sites and this is uh, as you can see, it starts to get more and more dense, and that's what we want. We want full, full coverage. And this isn't the be-all, end-all. This is just proposed for sort of phase two, maybe phase 2.5, maybe even phase 1.5, depending on how things go. But uh, uh, you can see we start to really build it out. We, that ring we talked about is really starting to get filled out in those concentric rings as we move in. So you have, uh, and again, these are totally proposed. They're, they're possibilities. They're where we would like things. Um, and uh, I think uh, Captain Ballard can, can speak a little bit about uh, some of their, uh, you know, um, criteria that they use to determine some sure. of these locations. Sure. Well, first of all, if you take it back down to Lynn Lane Extended, um, and just out where you can see a couple of cameras right in there, that's good enough. Or back just a little second. There you go. Okay, so. One of the areas that we want to ensure is safe is our uh, high school in that three block area. You've got Starkville Christian, Starkville Academy, and Starkville High School. So you'll see a little bit of a surrounding element if something takes place in one of those parking lots, uh, something takes place on school campus, it's high profile immediately in the day that we live in. Uh, those camera systems will help uh, give us some leeway there. So that's uh, then they're also centrally located into intersections where. Uh, just to the south of Proposition 1-9, uh, we have uh, areas that draw in a lot of uh, call police services. Uh, again, uh, the reason for this is to capture, protect the entertainment industry and to protect against regional criminals. 
regional criminals like to come in to places that are not well managed, hang out, do crimes, get involved in violent crimes, and try to leave our area. Okay. Yes, you said Proposition 1-9. What Propose one nine. Oh, Proposal 1-9. I was going to, <laughs> there's, a, there's a state proposition out there somewhere? No, no, okay, no, sorry, no, thank no, you. No, <laughs> So you'll see the in the southern route, we've got cameras located at uh, different locations that you try to leave out of the city. And then that is just, um, as you flip it up to the north, very, very similar. We have a nursing home up there. We have, uh, again, certain areas that kind of draw in uh, high levels of police service. Uh, so we kind of cut off 389, that's a main venue exiting out uh, back towards West Point that's um, cut out. So again, the, the concept is to be able to identify regional criminals that are trying to go back into their region uh, that we have a solid lead on, a solid vehicle. Okay. It's kind of going along going, let's see, uh, Parker McGill, and I was just seeing the places that are around that actually may already have have some that could be Definitely. And tied we into. We, we regularly, you know, go to work with private businesses and we'll sometimes have to physically go down to their location with a thumb drive and pull that video off of right. it. There's, all, there's as many different kind of video formats and players as you can imagine. So it, it's always an adventure when you go down there. And so that's one thing Project Greenlight does is, is standardizes all that. Standardize that and, and basically we don't have to go down there, it just federates that feed. You know, you may not like this, but I'm betting you might have a nice input into DRC when folk, when project, new projects are coming in. You maybe find yourself visiting at DRC, oh, sure, or else letting sure. Captain Ballard stand in for you. Yeah. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Okay. And you know, in, in Detroit and New Orleans actually does something similar to this. You know, they certain types of businesses, like like a liquor store, for instance, or a convenience store, is compelled via city ordinance to participate in this. And my so. understanding is we have that ability if we wish right, to exercise something to think it. Something to think about. Something to think yeah. about for sure. Mm -hmm. I just want to give you guys an update and let you know what we're thinking about long term and we appreciate y'all's support and, and participation in this and definitely welcome off, obviously any input you guys have. So. I think it's great. We all have been doing really good work and I'm delighted that, uh, that we're moving forward with it and I do think that seeking out these partnerships with businesses is a big component to that. So if we can, whatever we can do, uh, Captain Ballard, you and the Chief, if y'all have some communication with people on a regular basis that uh, you might want to say to them, you know, can we research doing what it would be to, to be able to do that and have us participate with them. So, and any of the new ones that come in, let's look at, you know, if you're going to put in, put in a security system, let's make sure that it talks to, talks to ours. So we'll add that as a part of the checklist at DRC. Yes, sir. Okay. You're making that an if, like a condition or a choice by the business owner, or not a mandate? Well, not it's not a mandate yet because we're not in a position to do that, but we can certainly make a strong suggestion. And I, I think researching an ordinance that makes that a requirement for given potential given businesses and uh, might be something that we want to look at. So we can research it, see if it's something that's wise to do. And second, I can ask from, Atkin, uh, from a policing standpoint, what's your technology like? Um, you know, just something that ties into as, as a current situation. You got a code item. Somebody's trying to get out of town with a child. That, can you okay lock the lock the city down basically where they can't leave, or if they do, you know which exit they left on? Or is this something you're constantly just? Yes, sir. Well, if you're talking about uh, Amber Alert type of situation, a, a child kidnapping time is everything. I think research has shown uh, you got about four to eight hours to apprehend the suspect. Uh, you're probably not going to result in uh, apprehending before he ends up killing the victim. Um, so speed and efficiency is everything. It's like Joel said, uh, our ability to be able to get that video feed, get that immediately blasted to supporting agencies, highway patrol with an actual uh, clear type of video, it's hard for them to go anywhere when you know the car, you're tracking the tag. Uh, it's, it's a fear, obviously, from command level, law enforcement, our children are a part souls and uh, protecting them is very important and, and uh, speed is everything. Uh, so this system would enable us to uh, protect if, if uh, some sort of uh, sexual predator comes into our region, uh, then yes, we would have the ability to at least a much stronger chance of apprehending that individual. Thank you. Thank you.
Anything else? Anyone else? Go, brother. Question yes, number one, actually. It's not mandatory when people put new business in, not to install cameras? We, don't, we do not have uh, a mandatory requirement for them to do that. We, we obviously are now at the point where we're strongly suggesting, and if they're going to do it, we're going to absolutely strongly suggest that they make theirs marry up with ours. And I don't know why anyone would want to do that. But I think we need to entertain an ordinance that perhaps says if we, you know, if you have this business or this business, that we might do that. And, and uh, I think there are some cities that have done that. Are you familiar with there are any particular cities in, in the state of Mississippi who have done that? Uh, Madison, I think. Is, Madison has taken that. Okay. Well, I've got that down as a to-do, so we'll take a look at it and see. I think it will be wise. Okay. Good. Then we'll, we'll certainly take a look at that. Anyone else? Gentlemen, thank you so much for being party to this. We appreciate the update and we will let y'all move aside and find Mr. Logan. All right. Oh, <laughs> so looking back over here. All right. I, I'm sorry. Hey, here. <laughs> okay. You are up and you're going to give us an update on the Parks and Recs uh, activities department. Yeah, basically everything. Okay. Um, we're turning it to Sitting all right, standing it preferred. I'm good either way. You're you're yeah. fine where you are. All right. Other than the fact that I never even noticed you. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. Oh, okay. oh here. Yep. Let's do that. There we go. All right. So I'm just going to jump right in. Um, I, I did include a uh, provide. I guess every chair, if I'm not mistaken, and I have plenty of extras. Um, something we started doing about six months ago, and that's a a, a an event calendar. I um, mean, I guess the good problem to have or good news is that it's now extended to two pages so you can't quite see everything it's it's almost in fact almost two full pages um, so I've got hard copies here and I'm happy to email to anyone um, we actually have two events this weekend we've got a baseball tournament and a basketball tournament over at the Sportsplex so it's going, it's going to be busy just just left there a few minutes ago got everything looking good and, and thankfully it's finally good weather but I wanted to start with just some some discussions about events and let y'all know kind of where we're at um, by my count, again, we didn't start, I guess, compiling it in this format until about mid last year. Um, but at least by my count, we had around 12 tournaments hosted um, last year. Um, you know, just think mostly baseball. Um, that includes the two, the two soccer tournaments, um, things like that. Um, we're currently, just as of right now, at 23 for this year. So that's, that's a jump from 12 to 23 tournaments. Um, that in, does include uh, two state championships that we bid on and won. Uh, the MSA Premier Cup scheduled for May 24th through 26th, Memorial Day weekend. And then the uh, uh, Mississippi Tennis Association Tri-Level State Championship, September 27th through 29th. Um, so again, two state championships coming to town. Uh, and another highlight, a uh, big event, we you know host a lot with Grand Slam and Mike Normore. Um, they'll be here June 8th through 10th with their state championships. Uh, which is over 100 baseball teams. So just a, again, kind of a uh, an event of note. Is that the normal size for them? 100. That that something? state championship last year has been at that 100 plus number. Okay. So it's it's. What does that translate to a number of people? Can you pick a uh, guess? At 10 to 20 pairs. So that's uh, oh, easily you know two to three thousand just in players, and, and then yeah, parents and all that. That's the goal. Um, so uh, we also have had, I guess a note I wanted to, to kind of point out, we've had some new groups to approach us, which is, is really what we want, obviously. More traffic, more groups, more competition for weekends. So uh, USSA Baseball um, had several event dates scheduled with us, and I think they still do have one or two, but they had to postpone some. But they're working to get in this market. Basically, that's another option for an event group, um, USSA Baseball. Uh, GSSA, which if I'm not mistaken, is Gulf States Sports Association. They're primarily based out of Alabama. Um, that's where we see a lot of their events, but they, they're trying to come in um, and have um, had one scheduled last weekend, but surprise, surprise, weather kind of impacted, so they postponed uh, for now. Uh, and then AAU, uh, we hosted our first last year uh, AAU basketball event. Um, and with the uh, compounding this with something we'll chat about later with the facility use agreement, we've been able to uh, work through and, and be able to get some more of those. So I think we've got two on the calendar right now and probably expect one or two more to be added later. Um, so again, just, just new groups that are coming to us, whether, you know, I'm, I'm certainly not taking all the credit there, but making it easier for them to come to us and, and want to host these events, make sure they understand the process, what fees are. Um, just making it as simple as possible, getting them information, respond to an email, you know, just about, hey, when we're available, um, you know, actually having, you know, competitive. We've had to turn some people down, which is, is actually a good problem to have. Um, so, uh, again, just, just wanted to make sure you understand kind of where we're at uh, with events. That was tournaments only. 
Uh, overall, by my count, uh, there were approximately around uh, 30 total events hosted at our facilities last year. And again, the number may be more than that, but again, we, we started really counting about mid last year and putting it in a calendar, calendar format. Um, so by that count, we're already at 42 scheduled for this year. That includes you know, some of our events. We have groups that come to us to host events. Um, and that really just primarily goes through about August, September range. There'll be more as the fall events and all these folks that come to us during the fall, um, you know, start to reach out over the summer, there'll be more added to that calendar. So uh, we, we jumped from approximately 12 to 23 in tournaments and from around 30 to uh, 42 with more to be added on overall events. <laughs> You're, you're pinging us about once a week with this, is that right? Yeah, I think, that's the goal. I think if you would, yeah, if you would do yeah. that, like maybe every Monday or something, mm -hmm. and that way, if nothing else, even if, even though it might not have changed, right. we have an opportunity to look at it again and sure. see what's going on. Just remind us that some things are going on. Sure, so that'd be great. Thank you. All right. Uh, some new events. I wanted to highlight just a couple of quick ones that we've either tried or have coming up. Um, so we did a study hall event back in December, which was, was interesting. Just something we wanted to try new for the first time. We've got the gym. It was finals time. We've got great partners and folks like Strange Brew and Shipley's who were, were interested in doing this. And we were able to provide free coffee and donuts and a big wide open gym for quiet time for folks to study. Um, so we did that back in December. Toddler time has uh, become uh, enormously popular and I'll highlight it uh, again later. Um, but that's an event geared towards the, the three, well, the five and under, but really that three to five year old uh, age group. Um, baseball and softball opening ceremonies are coming up, which is something that has not been done and we're, we're trying this year. Um, you will actually receive paper invitation or hard copy invitations, but I want you to go ahead and know about it right now. Uh, that's April uh, 4th and 5th, so Thursday, April 4th and Friday, April 5th. We will do uh, Thursday, April 4th is softball opening ceremonies, Friday, April 5th is baseball opening ceremonies. Um, that's just a chance to uh, family atmosphere, open the, the baseball and softball seasons, get everybody out. Um, you know, we're, we've been proud of some of the facility improvements we're making and, and kind of unveil those um, and things time, like that. Time of the day? Uh, evening. So it'll be, yeah, six ish. Six six, okay. yeah, about, about six ish. Okay. Uh, and we'll have all that on the, on the actual invitation and Facebook event and all that. But uh, working to get all that out now. Um, so again, those are coming up. Dodgeball tournament, we're partnering up with Humane Society, which we, we love them. They're a great group and love to, to partner with them to work uh, on events. So we're partnering with them uh, March 30th, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. We have a dodgeball tournament coming up. Um, so yeah, that's, that's just some of our uh, event info. Um, you know, we've got more later, but any questions so far on, on just events? I think, well, I'm going to say right now sure. that it's, it's a wonderful that we are doubling up on them. I mean, that, that's just exactly what we want to do. We want people in our parks and enjoying them. So that's great. Kudos to you guys for, for making that happen. <clears throat> um, program. So obviously a, a, a lifeblood of our department. Um, and I'm just going to run through some stats here and some other things. So uh, youth, basketball, which, youth basketball, which we just finished, had an increase of approximately 9.5% just from last year. Um, and uh, interestingly a note, which I, uh, an interesting note when I did this for all these, were how we've grown just since 2016. Youth basketball has actually grown about 38% um, since 2016, which is incredible, problematic <laughs> in good and bad ways. But uh, again, it, it is great that it's, that it's grown like that. Um, youth softball has increased around 9.1% um, just since last year and over 22% since 2016. Um, and then youth baseball, which we're working with uh, SBA on doing this year, has, uh, um, uh, I guess, increased approximately around 10%, which many of that's actually in the new three to four year old Start Smart program and in the 13 plus division. Uh, we had a, we ordered our Start Smart equipment for those three to four year olds and actually got a quick response back from the national director who had never seen a brand new program as big as ours. So we're, we're the biggest right now in the nation he's ever heard of for three to four year old sports. We love baseball. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and yeah, 98 of those three to four year olds are in baseball, including mine, and then 38 are in softball. So it's a, it's a very, very big program. And you can see in the bottom left just our, our trends from just from 2017, just kind of um, you know, the, the numbers of where we're at. Um, sports team sponsors, I didn't put that, that graphic up here, but just kind of a note, uh, overall we're, we, we're up in the amount of revenue just for team sponsorships. Very kind of specific team sponsorships. You get emails, Lynn probably gets more than she'd like about team sponsorships a couple times a year, but that revenue number has jumped about 11.9% since last year and then over 68% since uh, 2016. 
uh, field sponsorships, which is something we revamped late last year and implemented, uh, deadline of February 1st. Uh, we've got all that taken care of. Uh, we revamped that, and we'll by the end of next year, when this uh, this field sponsor program we did this time was for 2018, 2019. After we're all said and done with, we'll have forty thousand dollars in new revenue from that. Um, and then, big thing there is a, a lot of new signs, um, just updated. And they look good. I've seen some of them. Uh, well, they're not installed yet. Oh, okay. yeah, not yet. Not yet. Okay. Close. We'll, by opening ceremonies, that's the goal to get all the um, new frames on the softball side. Uh, the frames are good on the baseball side. We've just got to update the field names. Um, so again, a good problem to have, but a lot of our field names are changing. Folks had just gotten used to them, but we're yeah, they're they're changing because of sponsorship. I thought so. I'd seen new signs in the key. Yeah, uh, you might have for some new I'm trying to think new rule signs, but yeah, some of those logos are changing basically. So um, pickleball, very very popular. Um, uh, they is mm, <laughs> I love it. Yeah, it's yeah. You're a pickleball I, I, person. I, yeah, I, I, I got out there with uh, one of uh, Ben's little boy and, and showed him a little bit of the game and played. And he I won't say how bad he beat me, but um, anyway, so pickleball is a free program we're offering three times a week. Um, right now, and the demographic there is primarily those age 50 plus, but it's very, very popular. They've actually striped um, an outdoor court at McKee, so they're using that. Um, but again, it's just it's just something that's come within the last two years and really hit Starkville and has, and has grown just incredibly. Um, and then Tyler Tom wanted to hit it again because this, it is award winning. It won the Mississippi Recreation Parks Award last year for programming, um, and it's just incredibly popular. Uh, we, we've got a group that's showing up. They're they're having 20 to 30 parents and 40 to 50 kids every time we do it now. Well, and somebody hit me up not too long ago about having it at least on the weekend mm -hmm. sometime yeah. because their parents right. obviously who work, right. um, who would like to have some of that kind of thing. So I don't know mm -hmm. if we have spacing, timing, and all that sort of business. But if we're considering a potential weekend toddler time, I think there's going to be some demand. We, we are, yeah, and just because of youth basketball is so large that just ended a, about a week and a half ago, we haven't had any weekend time available, but yeah, that's part of the plan in the near future is to, to offer a couple of those on weekend dates. Could, uh, I, yep. could I ask, if, if there's a, a limiter or a limitation on how much these programs are likely to grow, facilities and, and space is probably going to cap out pretty soon? Uh, well, it's, uh, because of our, uh, I guess, basketball as an example, basketball. because it's, it is so big, but because of the partnerships with school district and the joint use agreement for schools and the ability to use their gyms, we still have room to grow. Um, we could absolutely, you know, if need be, could use the school gyms on a weekend potentially. Um, but so far, we're, you know, it, we've been able to manage it in-house. We just, you know, the season gets a little longer each time, and, and the, the times get a little longer. You know, on Saturday, we generally might play from 8 to 2, but sometimes we'll end 3, 4, 5, just depending on the weekday. So we, we still do have room to grow in youth, in youth uh, basketball specifically, and certainly within, you know, softball, baseball. But, it, but at some point, you're going to yeah. need facilities and space, it, if, particularly basketball. Glad to hear about the pickleball mm -hmm. because I, I yep. know people who do that. Yep. Um, yeah, if, if we if we were to experience a jump like we did 2016 to 2019 in anything, we we you know if we experience another one of those jumps over the next two to three years, we're gonna yeah. Uh, well, but part of the, our joint use agreement is so that we can right, right, utilize right. additional Perfect. areas that uh, that might be underutilized at this mm -hmm. point in time and have some of those kinds of things. Yeah. So that's what. I'm, yeah, as, uh, basketball. That would be the the fallback is if we get in a bind. You know, dates wise, we we absolutely have that ability and, and have even discussed that already. You know, like you know this uh, when we had the soccer tournament the, is the example. We had frostbite soccer tournament a while back, um, and also had basketball games going on. So. Good or bad, depending on how you view it, you pull up to the sportsplex and there's nowhere to park because there's a tournament going on in basketball. So in the future, we may look to move, uh, take opportunities like that to move to the school facilities just to alleviate some of the the, the parking stress. But uh, because we do have that joint use agreement, which we'll highlight again later, we, we have the ability to do that. It's definitely got no point with basketball, I and mean, we go up there daily sometimes, and you can't yeah. find a court for weeks on end. I think if you build it, they will come. I mean, it's in the winter months. You, you're talking about. Um, an opportunity for our youth to get out out of the house mm -hmm. and come up there and exercise and uh, personally just knowing it's it's tough to get a court and uh, we already talked about you and I had some small discussion mm -hmm. I don't know if you can add on there you know if you knock the wall out there and just extended the metal the metal mm -hmm. side of the basketball court but then you're saying you know it's limited to parking mm -hmm. you know from the sport I, I know what you're saying but I'm saying it's right. 
it's got it's been to a point. Mm-hmm. As far as basketball goes, if you built four, mm-hmm. four more courts, they'd be booked every day too. I think. Yeah. So. Well, some of the beauty of being in the South is that you know the weather is never so inclement for a long period of time that you couldn't be outside mm-hmm. if it was covered. Right. Um, and I think maybe some covered outdoor courts may be mm-hmm. maybe something that seems like a good looking. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah that would allow us to have some yeah, more of that activity. Improving, I think, improving our outdoor courts just mm-hmm. for pickup basketball yeah. um, and others as well sure. and, and would scattered help. Around the yeah, city. and then I think from the tournament perspective, it helps having the agreement with the school district yeah. with what you're talking about in terms of just having more indoor space mm-hmm. as well. But I, I don't disagree with Alderman Carver that mm-hmm. you know more courts would all, would be certainly be, be nice. Great, no, be great. <laughs> we so, you know there are all kinds yeah. of things. Right. Yeah. 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 So, um, sorry. Here we go. And I apologize for my ESPN. I thought I was about to get a score, so I just swiped it up and you're it just fine, talked to fine. me, and I apologize. So my bad. Any other comments, questions on programs? I'll move on. All right. Uh, grants, which we love to chat about uh, and, and have spent a lot of time um, applying for and researching um, just over the past year plus. I want to go into some we've applied for, been awarded, and others that are on the horizon. So uh, the first one, with, uh, just highlighting this was from last summer, we were awarded the $35,000 for the Healthy Out of School Time Grant. Um, that was used for the, the new meal program um, hosted at the Star- Sportsplex. Um, so again, great grant program, and actually because of the, the success we experienced there, we've been offered a $10,000 uh, grant kind of as a tag along uh, that we did not have to apply for that's on the agenda for this meeting. Um, so yeah, the, the agenda item you see for this uh, for the meeting coming up Tuesday for that $10,000 to accept is actually kind of a second step with that. Uh, the NRPA selected three peer mentors in the nation, and we were one of them, to help this next group of, of agencies that will get this same grant again this summer. Um, so we're going, going to mentor them, and as part of that, they're going to give us $10,000 to kind of add on to the work we were already doing. Um, so that's those first two. Um, slightly smaller, but still important. We were awarded $2,000 from Walmart for, uh, that we use for new disc golf baskets at JL King Park. Um, we have an applic- We have applied officially for the NRPA increasing access to Healthy Meals program grant, which would be for uh, community garden and education, uh, and education program at JL King Park. Um, it, important to note, and this research and, and big trends nationally, uh, we call this area a food desert. So, um, if you're at JL King Park and in the area, you have a minimum of 1.7 mile walk, bike ride, or vehicle uh, transportation to get to the nearest produce. Um, and to someone with a car, it's not a big deal, but obviously not everyone has a car. So 1.7 miles walking is, is, is a very, very big task for someone that just wants some fresh, healthy meals or, or produce. So this, uh, this program grant would actually be, uh, hopefully solve that. It would give us a chance to, to do some work and do a community garden, do some community education, um, some individual planting options. Uh, there's, there's plants and produce you can do in apartments. Um, bucket plants, things like that. So this grant would kind of go to go to meet that. We met with school district and, and MSU Extension about this. Really excited about it. Just waiting, waiting on the answer uh, to see if we are we're selected or not. Um, we can apply, and it's actually again on the agenda this time, uh, this coming Tuesday, for up to $120,000 from MDWFP, that's Mississippi Department of Wildlife, Fisheries, and Parks, um, through their Recreational Trails Grant Program. Um, this grant program is a 20% city match, which if you know, we do officially apply and are selected. It, we could use that uh, via in-kind um, services, so not cash. Um, and uh, that that uh, recreational trails grant program, if we were selected, we would use that to construct a nature and multi-use trail that connects um, the back of McKee Park to Highway 12. Um, so again, that's that's to be discussed officially and, and um, uh, give official approval to apply for as of this coming Tuesday. Um, we will apply, um, doing the research and, and uh, groundwork right now to apply for $25,000 from the Christopher Reed Foundation um, to use, it's got to be used for accessibility and inclusion um, and we would, um, right now we've, we've decided and believe the best use of that would be for accessibility and inclusion at JL King Park, um, you know, potentially new trail, new sidewalk, um, walking track, um, all that. So just general, I guess the blanket statement is inclusion and accessibility at JL King. So there's, there's definitely some accessibility challenges over there that we seek to, to fix through that grant program. And that is that is a no city match. That's a 100% grant program um, that we have not applied for yet. The deadline's next week. 
Um, and then the grant partnership for the mountain bike trail, we're still, you know, waiting, I guess, final details. But basically, we have the opportunity to partner with the local mountain biking group um, to do a mountain bike trail at Jail King Park. Um, and um, they were going to go ahead and get started, but they decided to hold back because there is a grant opportunity coming up, which we're, we're working through um, the actual details and application dates and all that. Um, but it's through the IM International Mountain Biking Association, whatever that, that acronym is. Timeline this, uh, this year? Uh, the, yeah, this, this year, year, later this spring. Okay. Um, so that, that's when we're looking at, we'll, you know, uh, the last time they just barely missed the dead, deadline, but we'll have to line it up and, and get it on the queue. But it's something we're keeping our, our eye on. And, when, and that trend, that grant, relatively small grant, less than 10000 but would go towards like trail design and some supplies and things like that to implement that trail. And that's in that area to the east, east of J.L. Yeah, King correct. that is closest to, closest to the correct. school but it's very wilderness right yeah, now. Very, very dense, yes, <laughs> densely very, wooded. Dense. So it would be a really cool use of a space that's being <clears throat> totally unused right now. So, so that's, that's the quick grant summary, and I, I want to put in a plug, uh, make sure to thank City Clerk's Office, Joanna, Lisa, for all the help they are with this. Just just fantastic, kind of guide me along. Um, you know, everybody, grants is a great buzzword, but it's, it's you don't want to apply for every single one, especially if there's an incredible match attached to it, but they've been great to... You know, with all their assistance and, and guidance and, and everything related to all these grants. So okay. very much appreciate that. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Any questions of Mr. Logan while we have him? That's just grants, yeah. We're, oh, I'm sorry. Were you moving oh, on to something? Yep. Yeah. Okay, well, <laughs> all right. Sorry. Uh, I'll, I'll try to rest through these. I know we'll go through these. Yeah, you're yeah. going to need to get yeah. on with the agenda, so go ahead. Yep. Yeah. Um, so projects, I just want to highlight uh, some, some, you know, just various uh, projects that have gone in. Um, that, that we've done. So you see some accessibility issues we're, we're attempting to address at Sportsplex, McKee. Um, I don't have a picture up here, but we have uh, are working towards, I don't think it's final yet, a sidewalk that'll uh, open up access to the new playground at Moncrief. Um, so fences at McKee Park have been installed. I know it's kind of had this hard to see, but that those pictures on the top right had some very, very significant curling problems uh, with those two middle fields at McKee Park, and the, the new the new fences are up, the new chain links up, it looks great. Um, the next step is just uh, just net repair. Um, so new playgrounds have obviously been installed um, at Moncrief and J.O. King. Um, J.O. King also got a new roof at the, the upper pavilion. And then just continue the water bucket at J.O. King Park. Um, you see pictures here of uh, some of the dog park equipment we've installed, the LED lighting at the outside of Travis Outlaw Center. Um, McKee got a new tennis backboard. Um, we helped install new windscreens at uh, Starkville High School Tennis uh, Facility. Uh, those were paid for by Starkville Tennis. We just helped install them. A new gazebo roof at George Evans. Um, and not a picture on here, but I just left there. We've got some new tent fences that we're using for leagues and um, tournaments. It's just very, very much addressing uh, that, that face that you know, as you walk up, so they look great. Um, there's lots more, the you know, Nets McKee, uh, we've got a lot of projects in the works. Um, resurfacing my outdoor basketball, that was mentioned earlier, that's, that's, we're just waiting on a second quote. We would like to resurface several of our outdoor uh, basketball courts because they are so heavily utilized. Um, so that's, that's in the works, just waiting to get that second quote. That's McKee and J.L. King? Uh, yeah, we've we got quotes to do George Evans, uh, the two at J.L. King, and McKee. Um, okay. Just yeah, just waiting on that second quote to kind of determine what, what might fit. The first quote was about $5,500 per court. So I'm just waiting to see what that second one's like. Um, all right, kind of coast right along. Um, these are civilian market reports. This is a quick note. I actually have hard copies of these and happy to email them. This is just more of what we're doing, trying to use data to make decisions. These facility market reports give you demographic data, um, what the community profile is within a 10 minute walk. Um, these have just been a fantastic tool that we were, were helping to kind of guide some of these programming decisions and, and other decisions and really give you a, a great detailed look at what the, the surrounding areas of these parks are. So it's, it's a benefit we get from being NRPA members um, and, and I nerd out to these things all the time. I really like this part of the, the job. So, uh, but again, I'm happy to provide these uh, via email or, or you know, take the hard copy. And then just wanna kinda highlight this last little bit. Um, just a lot of, I guess, uh, just different things that we, we've done. And we are coordinating youth baseball in partnership with the SBA this year, which has gone really well. Um, you know, just over the past year, year and a half, we've done new facility use agreements, new facility rental and program instructor agreements, the sponsor policy. Um, different events will do specific sponsor packets. Um, we're working, you know, with Joel and IT to come under the actually the city website management. So we'll, we'll do away with our current website management and come under the, the management of the city program um, just to improve that look. 
um, the uh, postseason program surveys. So now with all every single program we do, we do postseason surveys just to try you know develop um, some some improvements for that next year. Um, the social media presence, which actually that's the graphic you see up there. Um, because of our great partnership with public communications on campus, uh, we have interns pretty much year round with them. Um, I actually only have data through June of 18 last year, so we've got to backtrack some, but just that graphic shows you just how much our social media presence has, has increased. Twitter alone, um, I have to look up here. Twitter alone, um, we were up to, up from 48,000 to over 261,000 impressions over that you know fairly short time frame. So we've just incredibly expanded our, our social media presence in general. It shows. Yeah, and then uh, the of course use of our digital display sign. If you've ever put a, seen us put a joke up on the sign in front of the Travis Outlaw Center, uh, I know people get a kick out of it, have fun. But again, that's part of increasing our social media presence. We get over 2,000, not 2,500 impressions just off every time we do that. So it's 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 very very uh, measurable. So okay. that's the quick and dirty. Okay. All right. Now I'll ask anybody have any questions or anything that uh, you want to touch on any deeper while we have him here in a slightly more informal format. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll just say briefly, I appreciate that we're measuring this and being able to show our growth. So I appreciate it, Gary. I think it's y'all are doing a great job. So um, and it shows. So. It really does. Yeah. And we hear comments about it on a regular basis. We'll need it too. You will. Yeah. Well, okay, cool. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you all for making presentations. Yeah. I should have given you each one <laughs> yeah. one deal, but I live and learn. So, all right, we can go now into our uh, uh, our agenda and take a look and see what we've got. See if there's anything that anybody has any questions or thoughts about. We have three sets of minutes, um, and if anyone has any concerns about it, I would be inclined to put those on consent. Uh, Alderman Vaughn, any issues with you on consent with the minutes? Okay. Okay. All right. Let's. let's put those in consent unless we hear otherwise. Uh, and under Mayor's comments, I'm going to uh, bring up the SHS State Championship team. Um, and then we've got some police officers and uh, our new engineering inspector to introduce. Does anyone have anything they want to bring up in particular? Yes, sir? Are we going to do anything beyond the board meeting to celebrate? Well, I think the partnership was looking at doing a parade or something, cool. so I was leaving it to, to those folks okay. who do events. Yeah, great. So, yeah, okay. I was waiting to, waiting to hear back from them on that. Good deal. But I was going to at least acknowledge, yeah. acknowledge it and sort of I can do a proclamation kind yeah. of Yeah, good deal. Um, and we have two public appearances. One, we got the Bill Nash Award. Um, Amy Counterman, who was uh, the person who facilitated us even receiving that award, being, being considered for that award, uh, received it for us, and she's going to come make a presentation to us about that under public appearances, and then we have our audit presentation that Mr. Scribner will be providing to us. Um, no public hearing this time around, and consideration of resolution registration with the Mississippi Department of Surplus Release. You're going to have to remind me what that is. I just put it no. on the agenda because I was supposed to. The Mississippi Department of Surplus is where any government entity can just, and that, they have desk or right. filing we're required, desk, but we we're need required to, do the resolution. to go as a online right. partner. Okay. So can, I would so hope we need to park and go park and 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 and the update on the parks and park programs and grants uh, we heard today and we'll ha hopefully have a slightly shortened version but that was at the request of the vice mayor so um, airport is a lease agreement which Chris has blessed is that correct okay all right uh, consent on that all righty, um, and we have a special event request which we know will not go on consent, and then the other one is a landscape waiver which is associated with um, chick, chicken salad chick. Um, they've got some some issues with their neighbors and how they're going to do that. They had to ask for some some changing to that, and so I don't have the details on off the top of my head. So leave that off consent, or anybody have any? Leave it off. Leave it off. Okay. All right, we'll do that. Uh, Mr. Burnett wish, wishes to participate in the EAP program for the city. Anybody issues on that? We generally are very comfortable with those. So, um, And then the lowest and best bid for the new um, chip seal for the Rock Hill Road. Yes. Not Rock Hill, but all, I, all of those up in that area. So, can, Does that include I, all four of those, Cody? Six. Six roads. Right. Uh, yes, it's either five or six. Yeah. It's, it's six. Yeah. And so, and this bid is significantly less. The one we bid when we bid it before, we got was like a quarter of a million or just, something. Just, and this just one, was, yeah. And this one is now down at a reasonable amount. So we're very pleased about that. How, how quickly could we get that going? Um, I mean, obviously I'll, weather I'll, dependent. I'll tell you what Edward has told me. Okay. Because I'm, I'm, 
I also want to know is how quickly we can get that going. Um, and he says that it's a little early to, to anticipate, but he would be disappointed if we weren't well underway by May. Okay, that'd be great. So, so, so. Any issues with that not going on consent? This is one of the things we've already approved. We were just getting the, getting the bid, so. Okay, then we have claim stock it and acceptance of the financials, which we usually are comfortable with. Somebody speak up if they have any concerns. Um, HR, we're advertising for radio operator dispatch. We had someone who um, I think resigned. So consent for that and advertising for a metering infrastructure administrator for um, Startwell Utilities. That was Mr. Stinson who also um, I think resigned or retired. Um, and then hiring for part-time customer service representative and, and Mr. Kemp, you correct me if I'm wrong, is gearing up for the summer when we're going to have all that heavy duty traffic in the in the utilities office so he's bringing her in part-time and then bringing probably full-time as we get into the summer months okay. and correct and this is also a position that's been previously filled all right consent on that um, all right then we have parks this is a uh, lease lease purchase for the mower um, should we leave that off consent okay <laughs> Um, and then uh, this is the, con the uh, application for the grant that um, Mr. Logan was talking about. Anybody have any issues with making that application? Okay. Put that on consent. And then uh, accepting the Walmart grant of uh, 10000 That was the one that we received just because, yeah. which is a great thing. So acceptance of that under consent. Um, Chief Nichols wishes to travel down to the Chief's Convention or Conference, excuse me, in Biloxi, along about the same time we're in the mail. We should consent for that one. Um, and then advertising for cleaning. Thank you. Nice to see you. All right. Um, and then under utilities, we have Mr. Kemp traveling to Asheville for TVPPA annual conference. Any issues with that one? Consent on that. And then Appalachian, an ARC grant application selection process for engineering services for what project is that? It's the trip. Trim cane? Okay. That's quite all right. Thank you, Ms. Benson. Okay. For the trim cane? Okay. Any issues with that? Okay. Consent. All right. Thank you all. Uh, and then we do have one thing for pending litigation that uh, Mr. Latimer has asked about. So aside from that, I know of nothing else. Anybody have any questions about anything? So, all right. Thank you all. Great weekend. Thank you, uh, Mr. Logan. And okay. we're in. Okay. Anyway. Well, no, Joel, you're still here. Thank you. Yeah, you're you're right. 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 Right.